In this segment, we'll be focusing on demand paging. In general, this looks at what's going to happen when we run out of physical memory uh, for the pages, and hence we have to replace uh, some page uh, from memory, and we've got to focus on which page we want to replace. So the main uh, concern we're going to be dealing with is what if the required pages no longer fit in physical memory, that is we're running out of RAM on the machine. Then physical memory effectively can be thought of as a cache disk. So uh, when you have a whole bunch of pages which consist of all the processes uh, that are currently running on the system and you want to keep the more important pages in physical memory or the less important ones on disk. This is known as swap space. So some of you when you're installing systems would have heard this notion called swap. Swap space is essentially uh, virtual memory on disk. So the pages that overflow that cannot reside in physical memory any longer are moved to disk. And this is how systems are able to run even when they run out of physical memory. Even when the total space required for all processes is more than the physical memory in the system, the system continues to function. And the reason they're able to do that is by transparently moving a virtual memory or the pages that are not important in the virtual memory to disk using this technique called demand paging. Okay. So if the page is not found in memory, then it results in what's known as a major page fault, which must retrieve it from the disk. And if the memory is full, then you invoke a replacement policy to swap pages uh, back to the disk. Okay. So in general, the, um, if you look at the overall hierarchy of the system, then this sits below the caching. So it's just another let can be thought of as another level in your system uh, where there's memory and disk involved. But note that one important aspect of this is that this is entirely managed in software by the operating system. So all these levels are managed by hardware. So hardware makes decisions about which uh, blocks of data are important, which blocks are not, and all the levels below the caches between memory and disk, such decisions are made by software. And so in a few segments that are coming up, we'll actually be looking at the specific algorithm used uh, for figuring out which pages are important in memory. Okay, so this overall component uh, between memory and disk is known as virtual memory. All right, so VM in general provides the illusion of a large private uniform storage. So it appears to the system that all processes are just accessing virtual memory that is pretty much limited only by the number of bits allocated for the address. So if you have a 32-bit system, then each process gets four gigabytes and we can have as many processes as we want. But in reality, there is a physical memory limit in the system. And virtual memory essentially allows you to transparently move or transcend beyond the boundaries of the physical memory, extending it all the way to a back, backup store or called swapping store, which resides entirely on disk. So this part resides on the disk, um, and then the system transparently figures out which pages are not important and moves them out to the disk, and vice versa. Moves important page, pages back from disk into memory when needed. So in general, what uh, demand paging provides is the ability to run programs larger than the private memory. Okay? To summarize, that's fundamentally what it provides. Uh, and the price is that you need to average translation on each memory reference. Uh, this is because you don't know whether the data actually resides on disk or memory, so you need to kind of figure that out uh, on each axis when you map your virtual address to your physical address. So. Some virtual addresses may reside on disk, in which case there's a page fault, and you bring data back from disk into memory and then access it. And some may reside directly on memory, in which case the translation exists. And to speed up the, the translation itself, in the previous segment, we saw the use of TLPs. And if you have swapping occurring all the time, between, even though this is a technique that ensures correctness and pr ensures that programs with which use memory larger than physical memory can still continue to run. If it's the case that it's it's a common case that there's 
data being always swapped from memory to disk and disk to memory. So if this um, uh, movement is common, then it, it leads to something known as crashing, where the, te the technique to move data between memory and disk itself is too slow, and your overall performance is uh, essentially comes to a halt. Uh, it slows down a lot because you're always spending most of your time moving data between memory and disk. Um, there are interesting um, things to think about in general. Memory used to be very expensive. Um, and if you look at historical trends, uh, they've gotten considerably cheaper. And the new limitation is really just power. So you're not limited by dollars. For example, you can buy a one terabyte machine um, from Dell uh, for about uh, $20,000. So in general, it's not that expensive. So if you have a terabyte costing $20,000, this is including processors and everything, right? This is not just uh, memory, okay? So if you look at, okay, so one terabyte costs uh, $20,000. So that's 1,000 gigabytes cost $20,000, $20, okay? So one gigabyte costs $20, right? So that's the, including the processor, and everything costs about 20 bucks or so across memory, which is very reasonable. Um, and despite this data is growing, and the interesting questions on whether data many whether data actually can fit in the large fraction of memory on the system. Um, and one interesting viewpoint is that if you have a lot of memory, then your system actually runs faster, which means you can actually get more work done for the same power consumption, which means your performance per watt uh, actually increases with more memory. So more memory uh, equals more uh, power, okay? More memory is more power, but more memory also equal to more performance, okay? So if you have more performance, um, then the performance per watt, uh, the question is whether the performance per watt overall increases, okay? So uh, if you have more memory, so more memory equals more wattage, but it also equals more uh, performance. So the performance per watt overall could be higher if you have more memory in your system.